Thanks so much for downloading the episode on the show. We talk about people. Weird, angry, and confrontational. Are we all those? Are we none of those? Also some ugly and awkward moments of the week and lots of stories in between. Thanks so much. Enjoy the show. It's another uncensored look at the world around you from sisters who will say just about anything to anyone at any time. It's the Uggs, Jamie. I can't tell you how many times I've taken off my earrings at a bar. Paula. You've got a very beautiful woman. Don't fuck it up. Uncensored as always, it's time for the Ugly Truth. Welcome to The Ugly Truth. It is episode 270. Ugh, ugh. Awesome. Okay, so it is, uh, this show is Wednesday, April 25th, and I just want to shout out to my son, my prince, my little man. Happy birthday today. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. He's big. How old is he? 26. Oh my goodness. He's like an old adult. It's like, what does that say about me? Well, you know what that says about me? That I had started having children at a very young age. (laughs) Super young. 15 is too young to have a baby. Don't have children in your high school years. I wish. (laughs) No. But he, I did start having, I had him very young. But happy birthday, son. I'm so proud of you. So, yes, I am a very young mother. And you know, it's so funny. I don't know. Are you at the, are you considered a young mom now where you are? No, I was uh, almost 27 when uh, Ryan was born. And then Mm -hmm. I was uh, 30 when Olivia was born. Interestingly, that is actually still considered kind of young in this day and age. Under 30 is not considered average anymore. I mean, we did it the old-fashioned way. We didn't have in vitro or anything like that. Right. Well, did you... Okay, do you remember the last guy that played James Bond? He's kind of blonde, thinner, hair with blue eyes. I can't remember his name right now. Anyway, he is dating Rachel Weisz. Do you know who that is? Oh, yeah. Okay, they announced last week that she is pregnant with their first child. Mm. Do you want to know how old she is? 46. 48. Wow. Wow, indeed. I can't even, I can't even imagine. I know we talked about this a couple of weeks ago about women who have babies in their older age. That is, that's a scary age to be pregnant for me. I I don't know. I would be really alarmed (laughs) and be really worried. Well, your eggs get old, man. I they mean, do, and 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 dude, sperms do too. Just because they can get you pregnant doesn't mean they're good sperm. So I mean, that's the last thing you want. Well, I mean, he played James Bond. I mean, yeah. I'm sure they're they're both very healthy people. But I mean, still, you don't. We don't know what eggs and sperm look like. They could be like relics for all we know. I know it's true. You just picture like it. It's got like <laughs> holes in it, and the tail's all weird and it's like what? This is. I didn't realize we were doing this, you guys. <laughs> they go flying in. They see the egg. She's like, oh, fine. You know. God, I'm one of the last. It's like, all right, I'm one of the last Mohicans. Get in there. Let's, do the, <laughs> let's see what happens, guys. It's like, oh, shit, we made a baby. Yeah, that's pretty much it. But yeah, I have always been um, one of the youngest parents when it comes to the school activities. I can't tell you how many times I've gone and they're like, oh, are you her s- older sister? And I'm like, no, I'm her mother. Come on. Don't. Don't do that. It's but. it's hard to tell, though. I'm so bad at guessing people's ages mm-hmm. that, you know, I assume they're, like, around my age. Yeah. But then come to find out, they're like, oh, no, I'm, I'm 28. And I'm just like, what? <sighs> yeah. God. I'm just like, <laughs> I thought you were, like, my age. And then how are you? And I'm just like, that's not important. That's, <laughs> that's really, a lady does not reveal her age. You know? It's like, oh, you're that old. <laughs> but I don't think think i look my age that's just me personally but i I, know i could be wrong i don't know you know i i think everybody looks in the mirror and going you know i've seen the people i went to high school with i'm doing all right you know you think that and then they go oh you you know you you definitely look your age and you know you think oh god i guess i do but what is what does it look like anymore i mean we're taking such good care of ourselves now that 
you know, as a society, we don't look, you know, I've seen pictures of our grandmother when she was 50. She looks like way old, you know? <laughs> right. And now, you know, Jennifer Aniston and J and JLo are 50. <laughs> they don't look like my grandma, you no. know? So I think our skincare has improved significantly. And even though there are celebrities and have access to stuff that, you know, maybe we don't, I mean, most people look pretty good, at least in where we live. I mean, every, I think everyone looks pretty good for their age, whatever that is. I was um, watching, well, okay, I watched Roseanne. Oh, the new one? Yeah, I think it's okay. I mean, I feel like they're overacting a little bit because I think they're just kind of, maybe they were rusty and so they're kind of trying to get back into the swing. And it's weird because you're looking at these people who were the kids and they're in their 40s and you forget because you saw them when they were teenagers and it's been 20 years. So I'm watching the two sisters talk and the one goes to the other, the the younger one goes to the older one, uh, Becky uh, she's having a pretty rough life and she's, I think, 43 and, um, Darlene is 40 and she said, well, you keep acting like you're 22 and you're not 22 anymore. And it was like this epiphany. She looked at her like, you're right. I'm not, you know, you you keep acting like you have all this time to get it out of your system and you kind of don't. And it's, I think we all struggle with that. <laughs> I think because your brain doesn't tell you you're old, you're old now. You think you're still you've got time and you're in your 20s. Yeah. And maybe if you're listening right now and you're in your 20s, well, congratulations. But the rest of us are not. And so you go, God, that's right. I can't I can't necessarily do that shit anymore. You know, when you go out and party and it's like after three drinks, you want to die. <laughs> it's, I know it's t- it's changed. Victor and I just had this conversation the other day where. I was saying to him that I totally remember my 20s. Mm -hmm. Like, I remember everything about them. I remember, like, the big milestones. I remember all of that stuff. Right. And then, like, the first five years of my 30s just sucked. And I don't really remember (laughs) them. That's and good. then, like, the last five years, they're a little hazy, but it's kind of coming back to me. Right. But, I mean... For the most part, my whole 30s are just like gone and I don't even Mm. know what happened. And yeah, it's just it's just gone. And I'm going to be 40 before I know it. And I'm just like, I've (laughs) I've lost I've lost all this time. You've lost a decade. (laughs) I've lost a decade. And now, you know, and I'm just like, that's how fast time is going for us. I mean, do you remember when? We were in our 20s and, you know, you or when you were a teenager and you couldn't wait to turn 18 or to get yep. your driver's license. And t- it seemed like time was just like a Glacial. snail mm-hmm. and it took forever. And then the next thing you know, your, you know, your son is going to be getting 26. his learner's permit or something like that. And yeah, it you know what you know, what hastens the timeline, too, is when you have kids and they hit high school. When they yeah. hit high school, you're like, okay, they're they're 14, they're babies, they're just adjusting to everything. They go to their first homecoming dance and whatever they're doing in school. And then the next thing you know, you're getting the email going, okay, parents of seniors, it's time to plan. And I'm like, what? <laughs> no, what? And so four years seems like a blink of an eye, but then you're going through it and you're like, man, you know, finally it's summer. Finally it's Christmas break or whatever. And the next thing you know, you're going, this is the last summer. My son will be here. He'll be in college next year and gone and all of that. And it, it does go so fast. And it's funny because what you start to realize, and this is the one benefit of getting older is that you realize there's really no reason to waste your time being angry. And then when you see people, being angry at your age, it looks so ridiculous. It's like you're almost embarrassed for them that they're being that they're behaving like that. When I see someone who's in my age range losing their shit on something that is not important, I feel sorry for them because it's so petty. You know, you're like, God, you're going to be dead soon. What are you doing? It's like, right. stop being mad. You know, Don't stop waste being mad at stuff. Just relax. 
it's not as bad as you think, I promise. It just feels like it because you're on social media too much. But the reason I said that is Daryl and I went up to pick up, we had a wine order up at our very favorite winery, Lava Cap, up in Placerville Mm -hmm. uh, by Apple Hill up in the foothills. And so we went up there and whenever we do, we pick up our wine and then we buy a bottle and we just sit because they have this beautiful patio that overlooks all of their vineyards. I'll take you there one day. It's so fun. Yeah, we've been to, we've been to Lava Cap. Yeah, it's amazing. And you can picnic out there. So we were picnicking out there. Suddenly, out of nowhere, these people show up. And there's a girl. She's probably in her early 20s. And she's incredibly hostile. And she's being very loud. And she's being very rude. I think she was on meth, personally. Her family was trying to corral her quite a bit. And all I could think of is, like, why did you bring her here? Like, why would you ever bring someone like that here? It's a it's a winery. It's not a it's not a bar. So she comes in and she's on her phone speaking very loudly, talking about, you know, fucking bitch, asshole, cunt stuff. Oh, my God. Everyone turns around and they're like, what the hell is this? And it's not a bunch of old people. It's just people enjoying wine. And this kid who's probably 16 or 17 is like, I'm sorry about her. She's just her friend. Da, da, da. And I was just like, just don't even talk. Like, I looked at him, I'm like, just don't even. Like, don't don't excuse it. It's bad, right? And so they were meeting some people there. And the woman saw her causing a commotion on her phone in the tasting room. So she pulled her out to the deck to talk to her. And, you know, when you have a, an addict in your family or a close friend, you you know what to do to try to minimize the damage that they're about to create. You know, because you're trying really hard for it to not escalate. Right. And it's it sucks that it happens, but we've all been there. I mean, I've been there. Mm-hmm. I know, you know, we've all done it where you're trying to minimize this drama that's about to happen if even one person says anything. So she's doing that. And Daryl and I went to the deck out further out because I said, look, we just got to go anywhere but here because I can see me punching her and I just I don't trust myself. I really just want to like go because she's going to she's going to look at me funny and then it's just going to be ugly and I want to come back here. So we we went out and a few minutes passed and then all of a sudden I hear people scrambling out to the parking lot and it's not her. It's not the meth girl. It's it's this couple and the dad, the husband is hostile and so the, the wife has turned on the car. She stands up. It's a truck. She stands up on the, the, the ledge of the truck and she screams into the tasting room. She's like, leave her alone. She's white trash. It's not worth it. <laughs> and so you see him come running out and getting in the car and they make a hasty getaway. And I was like, wow, that's so unfortunate that that happened. And she was there. She stayed there for quite a while before they actually all left. I'm like, man, it's so it's so easy to get pissed this in this day and age. And then the same thing happened. I was at my hair salon. And I was leaving and somebody accidentally pulled out before somebody else could pull out. So it looked like he cut they cut him off. The guy got out of his car and was yelling so loud at this person. He was getting spit all over his window just because he was he accidentally pulled out in front of him. See, I hate that. I love situations like you that. You do? Or you love to see it? I love to be in them. Paula, what? <laughs> I do. Why? Because I just want to be near people like that and <laughs> be calm and make them angrier. Oh, you're the, you're like Stephanie. Stephanie loves to do that, too. She loves to antagonize and then just be the calm one while the other one is acting like a crazy person. Yeah. And then I hope that they lay their fingers on me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. So you don't mind the confrontation? No, not at all. I don't like watching it. I don't like watching it. I hate it. I mean, I'll be in it, but I, I won't instigate it. I'm not afraid to be in a confrontational situation, but at this point, because I'm not 20 anymore, I just sit back and go, okay, this has to be really worth it for me. Like uh, one time we were down in San Diego at a bar and this, we were with some friends and this guy kept bumping into me and we asked him repeatedly to watch where he's stepping. And he was wearing a, a stuffed animal horse head, like a hood. (laughs) <laughs> and it was like wrapped around him like with Velcro. So he had like his face was showing and at the top it was the horse. And he was really annoying. 
and this was not more than three years ago. And he back he backed into me once again. I turned around. I ripped that thing off his head so fast that I pulled him back, you know, and it, it I wanted to pull his whole head back so he'd fall on the ground, but it didn't happen. I just ripped the, the hood off and pulled him back. And he turned around, looked at me confused. And I said, I've had enough of you. And the thing is, is that who am I to uh, to confront a man? <laughs> but I was, I had had it. Not the wisest decision. It wasn't wise, but I didn't care. I was done with him bu- bumping into me. It had been like 30 minutes of this and he was ignoring our requests and we couldn't move. We were at a table. He got escorted out and the woman that was with him, she gave me the death glare for a good 15 or 20 minutes. And I finally turned and I said, please come over. Let's talk. And then she left. Yeah. Because I do look scary when I'm ready to kill. Yeah. So I can't say that I'm so old that I won't do that anymore. But I also, I see these situations and I'm like, why? Why would you waste so much time? But then again, what am I saying? Here I am just telling you about how I would do it in a minute. I know. It happens to the best of us. It really does. But there's just, it just feels like time is so, so short to get into those altercations But yeah, it seems like that's exactly what happens, isn't it? (laughs) I disproved my own theory. (laughs) I don't know. I mean, I think every, I think as a society, we've just become so calm in some ways that people just want to be angry, you know? (sighs) Nobody fights on the playground anymore. Yeah, that's true. So if someone got out of their car and started screaming at me, I'm not gonna just you know walk away no Fuck of course no not. i'm gonna get out of my yeah. car and be like what's up yeah you know? <laughs> behind my glass behind my locked vehicle my hair looks great let's talk <laughs> i know but you know it's funny as we're all standing around you know drinking our tea watching it you know it's like oh what's gonna happen next <laughs> really like oh shit she got out of her car oh shit it's real now <laughs> shit's getting real yeah for real i i can't tell you how many times i've taken off my earrings at a bar <laughs> god crazy anyway okay so uh you're in your world you told me that there was a strange interaction between a weirdo and it got weirder what happened? Victor and I went out to dinner last weekend. And so we were waiting for our table. So we were sitting at the bar and this guy, like older guy, I would say probably in his 50s. Mm-hmm. And I would say he was maybe Hispanic or probably Hispanic. Mm-hmm. He comes up to Victor and he pats him off the back really hard. What? He's like, hey, and he oh my said, God. you're a handsome man, yeah? And <gasps> Victor's just like, kind of like, just, you know, very calm, just listening to the guy to see like what he's going to do. Right. That's a, that's a, that's a very unusual. Yeah. And so he says, um, you're a lucky man, you know? <laughs> and so Victor's like, uh, thanks, you know? What's He's that? all, you've got a very beautiful woman. Don't fuck it up. <laughs> so, oh my God. So, I, I would have been like, I would have leaned over going, do I know you? <laughs> and so... Um, <laughs> He's like, I'm I'm here to try and find a lady of my own. And so oh. I think he was extremely drunk. And I will so, hope so. So he's like, all right. And so they they went to shake hands and then the guy kissed Victor's hand. What? <laughs> what were you doing this whole time? Were you laughing? I was just watching. I was like kind of <laughs> stunned. I was just like, what is going on? Wow. But it was like an open mouth kiss. And so <gasps> Victor had spit on his hands. <coughs> oh, God. Oh, so God. After it was done, I saw Victor wipe the top of his hand on his pants. If that had been Daryl, it's not like, you need to go immediately to the bathroom and wash, wash your, your hands. hands. He could have given you some kind of chemical. You don't even know. But like, what if he was some weirdo? I, well, obviously he was. And the, so the <laughs> same night, there was another guy sitting there, and um, he was looked at Victor, and he's like, "Oh, he's like, women don't like uh, hairy men like us." <laughs> so, but Victor had both. They both had hairy arms. 
you know what? Word of advice. <laughs> Perhaps that you two should not go to the casino anymore for dinner. <laughs> I know, right? Like maybe you should go to a regular establishment where they only serve food. And so... Um, Victor said, like, yeah, I guess. And I was sitting right next to him. So I'm just like, well, I mean, I'm with him. And I, he's hairy as fuck. I know that. And, so, and then the guy's just like, it's all bad, though, when it gets up here. And so he pulled down his shirt a little bit and showed his chest hair. What? And this is a different person? Completely different person. Victor is just Why? one of those people that people think they can talk to. I don't know. Is does Daryl looks like that kind of person where people think they can just talk to him? Kind of. When we're out and about, I'm the one that ends up getting approached a, quite a bit. But I think it's because I look like I know what I'm doing. Because that happens to me like when we go to the store and stuff. Or if I go anywhere, uh, whether he's with me or not. Someone will approach me and ask me where something is or uh, do you know about this or that? And I'm looking at them going, no, I don't I, I don't work here. <laughs> and but then because of my backstory talent, I go, you know what? I bet I know where it is. I bet you could find it in aisle three because that makes the most sense to me. Yeah, I do shit like that. They're like, oh, OK, thank you. And they walk away. I don't know. I don't know. But you're right. I get approached more than he does. In any scenario, really. Well, for some reason, Victor is the type of person that just looks like, you know, he's a safe person to talk to. Well, he kind of is. Yeah, no, he is. I mean, he'll talk yeah. to anyone for it for a good length of time, too. See, that would bug me after a while. <laughs> it does sometimes. Yeah. I'll wander off. I'll be like, well, I'm going to go do this. And then he'll, oh, for he'll, sure. he'll just be like, oh, okay, well, it's nice to meet you. And then, you know, take off and... I'm like, why are you talking to that person? <laughs> that's so weird. That is so is weird. weird. Actually, that's happened to me. What actually what has happened to me is somebody will be talking to me. Now, I don't look at men or women as anything other than another human speaking. You know, I'm not like a guy where you're, you know, looking them up and down going, you know, if I was single, I'd do it. You know, nothing like that. I think guys look at women differently you know even if it's just completely like benign so if a man approaches me at Lowe's or something and he's asking me or talking to me about you know the flower I'm holding I don't really think anything of it other than it's like yeah well you know they have a bunch of them over there you know I, I'm not thinking like that at all and first of all like we said last week, I don't have the highest of self-esteem, so I'm not thinking that anyone's looking at me in any way other than I'm just another human standing here looking at a flower that he wants to, right? Mm -hmm. And then Daryl will show up out of nowhere. He'll be like, hi, babe. Well, let's go. I'm like, all right. What's so going on? Who's your Best friend? of luck with your flower search, you know? <laughs> and he'll be like, what's going on? I go, oh, he was just asking about this flower I was holding. He's like, no, he wasn't. <laughs> I'm like, what are you talking about? Yes, he was. Look, he's over at the flowers now. He's like, honey, no, that's not what he was doing. I'm like, well, I don't, I just don't see it. So maybe it's one of those things where he's got to look like, first of all, you should be really flattered. The fact that more than one man came up to him saying, you know, you're really but ugly. Good. Congratulations on landing a hottie because we don't know how you did it. <laughs> I mean, really? And I and if I was him, I'd be like, you know, I really want to be offended right now because what you're saying is that I'm ass ugly and I have a hot I have a hot lady. I just, <laughs> just assumed like, both of them were gay. So, well, no, not if they were complimenting you. Well, I guess I, my that's first true. thought was <laughs> my first thought was, are they pimps? I mean, what's happening? Oh, like maybe. I mean, if it you think about it, seem like the type that needs to get a hooker, but. No, like he's a pimp. Like he's oh, a pimp. Oh, oh. Like is she for sale? <laughs> yeah. No. When weird shit like that happens, I always wonder, is this a code that only a pimp would know? Like or a dealer or something? Like if there's some kind of code language. The code is if we talk about hairy arms then Or if I kiss your mouth <laughs> if I kiss you open mouth on the hand, that means something weird. Like <laughs> Like I don't get it. It didn't mean well, something weird. It was gross. <laughs> I hope you I hope he sanitized his hands. <laughs> he went and washed his hands. I would have told him, I'm like, if you plan on touching me later, you will shower before. That's Because <laughs> I God only knows what that man gave you. Yeah, really. That was God, the, people are that so was weird. weird. That guy was that strange. Weird. He that just is. came out of nowhere. <laughs> that is really weird. 
it's been a while since something bizarre like that has happened to me i have to say but when those things happen don't you just like look at someone else and go can you imagine can you believe it I couldn't believe Victor was letting it happen. I was just like, but then he was just like, what was I supposed to do? And I'm like, I don't know. But Not I let mean, him kiss your hand? <laughs> like, well, he's like, well, they were sh- we were shaking hands. And the next thing I know, he turned my hands over and then kissed the top of it. That is so odd. Yeah, that hasn't happened to me. Thank God. I can't. Uh. I can't imagine. Well, there you have it, weirdos. I'm trying to think if there's been any weirdo thing going on around me. Oh, I didn't. Do, do, you, do you remember me telling you about the man who was standing at the street corner in front of the school uh, with a sign? He was wearing like a, one of those billboard signs. Oh, yeah, about and abortion, right? No, it wasn't. A, no, it was about uh, marriage is one man, one woman. Oh, right. And he oh, was and then standing. He had a following. Yes. Be, and then the uh, the gay and lesbian group at the school and others were basically on the school grounds, and he was on the public sidewalk, and they were like screaming at each other, and it was an ugly thing, and it happened last year. And, of course, because I am confrontational, I left a voicemail with several, (laughs) several uh, school administrators telling them to get their shit in line and figure out what's going on. And then the sheriff called me. Yeah. And and asked me about it. And he said, does he has he ever, you know, touched any of the kids or anything? I'm like, no, but I think you would know that. If, if that actually if it got physical, I said, but what I'm I said, what I'm telling you is that this dude is jumping in and out of the street. He's going to get hit or a kid's going to hit him. And then what? And it's all because this little fool will not leave. I get what he's doing, but come on. And he's like, well, he's pretty harmless. He wanders all over Citrus Heights. I'm like, that says nothing to me. Citrus Heights is there's a lot of bad parts of Citrus Heights. I mean, come on. Anyway. He was back last week. Oh, no. He was there again. And, you know, for some reason, nobody, they didn't do the whole thing where they had the the rainbow flag out and all that stuff. Like, they were kind of ignoring him. And there were school officials standing on the on the school part of that area. And then and he's, he's been gone since. So I don't know what happened, but um, somehow he's decided to vacate the area and i i'm hoping for good because i'm like over it i'm over it no more protesting please yeah i I just can't can't. handle handle anymore it's like can we just choose like one thing (laughs) can we just you know is this really the hill you want to die on i mean i guess it is but i just it's just it's just like enough already enough okay so I want to go early into the ugly and awkward moments. Now, we did get some submissions, but I'm not going to read them this week because we're talking about weird people and weird people interactions. And so I kind of wanted to stay on that theme. So I actually have more than two because they're really short, but they made me laugh because I have been the weird person and I know you have too. I mean, we've both been weird, right? We've been the weirdos. Of course, usually. So these, there's four. And the reason I'm reading you four is because they're only once, they're like one sentence statements, but they say so much. And I know that we can discuss them at, at length if we wanted to. Okay, so here's the first one. These are the ugly and awkward moments of the week. The first one is, I walked up to a baby holding stranger thinking it was my sister at my daughter's soccer game. And I said, give me the baby. Oh, my God. (laughs) Can you imagine? No. Can you imagine walking up to somebody thinking it's your sister? Oh, please. I've done that. Not that. I would never demand a baby from a stranger. But if it's your sister, you're not giving the baby. (laughs) I just thought that's totally so typical. Oh, my God. That poor woman with the baby, though. Well, she was probably alarmed. She's like, huh, what? Joanne, why would you want my baby? You know, right. I don't know. It made me laugh. The second one is <laughs> this one. I want to say that I've done this, actually. I apologized to a woman I nearly bumped into in a record store, but it was my reflection in the window. I had just colored my hair blonde. <laughs> 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 I have done I haven't apologized to myself but I have walked into a store where there's like the the weird mirror hanging in a, some random area 
where you go, oh, excuse me. You're yeah. like, oh, it's just me. And then you get a better look and you're like, oh my God, I look exhausted. What is going on? I've excused myself and then apologized because I wasn't really there. <laughs> One time, and I've heard this happen. I've read these stories before, but it's absolutely happened to me. I was at JC Penny. This was a really long time ago when Penny's was actually a viable place to go shopping. Yeah. And I was walking around. I was super hyper focused on something and I backed up and I turned around I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. And then it was a mannequin. <laughs> yeah. And then I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm like, oh, you're a mannequin. Like, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why? Why would you talk to the mannequin? Like, what are you what are you doing? They, they don't hear anything. I talk to everything. <laughs> Seriously. What, weren't we just talking about how we talk to ourselves about something? Self? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You and I, were talking I told about you. Like, I'm like, I was talking to myself outside the other day and I said to myself, <laughs> I talked to myself in front of other people, which is really confusing <laughs> because I did that the other day. And Victor's just like, what? what are you talking to me? And I'm like, no, I'm talking to myself. <laughs> oh, well, at least you're acknowledging it publicly now. <laughs> I talk to myself in the shower a lot. I've been told it's a sign of intelligence. Yeah. That you work things out verbally with yourself, but mostly I'm just working out, I'm giving myself closure on life incidents that I didn't get closure on. That's usually what it is. Right. It's usually nothing or, you know, and isn't it always like, okay, I might be divulging too much about myself, but have you ever, where you're replaying a fight where you wanted to win it and you didn't because life isn't like that. And then you're thinking of all the horrible things that you would have said if you could have remembered it at the time. I used to do that when I was working. Oh, yeah. Well, I do it. I don't do it all the time, but it's like if I'm really frustrated with one of my children and then I'll say things in the shower to kind of work through it so that I won't say it to their face. I don't know. When they're adults, you'll you'll understand what I'm I saying. I can't make any noises in the shower because then I'll have Olivia. Mom, are you okay? Oh. You're like, yes, I'm just yelling at you in my imagination. Now go away. Get out. Was that for me or was that for your imagination? <sighs> God, <laughs> so t- exhausting. It is so exhausting. Yeah, it's crazy. Okay, oh, uh, on an offshoot, I read this little news article about a woman who went on public television, like in the UK, admitting that she had a favorite child. Oh. And she was super like, I'm totally good with this. Like, I don't really care. You know, she had three kids. She had two boys and a girl. And the girl is the is the is her favorite. And she's like, yeah, my first two were colicky. They cried. They never go to sleep. They're ill behaved and they're difficult. I love them, but they're difficult. And my baby girl came around. She never got colic. I can breastfeed her quietly just the way you're supposed to. And she's just a dream. Yes, she is my favorite. And people are outraged that she would dare admit that she has a favorite child well how old are they they're under 12 she she doesn't know yet no she doesn't but what's interesting is i thought i can't say that i have a favorite but i definitely love my kids all differently you know what i mean Mm mm-hmm And I have, well, I mean, including Natalie, who's my stepdaughter, I have four. And I love them all very differently. Everybody in the house thinks Tyler's my favorite. They just go, oh, no, it's Tyler. Tyler's your favorite. And I'm like, well, he's my only son. And that actually makes a difference. The way you love your son, you don't love your daughters that way. It's just a very, right? I have a special bond with Ryan. It's different. Yeah, me too. It's it's a weird bond between a, a boy and his mom. If it's a healthy relationship. Yeah. And it's very different. And because the girls see it as, oh, he's your favorite. I'm like, well, that's not really true. I mean, in that aspect. But I definitely have a different bond with him than I do with my girls. And I read something the other day and it said, girls are born to turn on their mothers. (laughs) They are not meant to bond with you. They are meant to flee as soon as they can. It's too much estrogen and you're too alike. I'm like, I absolutely, completely agree. I love my daughters more than anything in the world, but I I look forward to the day that they become independent and out. Aww. And then we'll be friends. And then we'll be friends again. Well, when you're raising daughter, oh, Paula, please. Well, your your daughter is so little. I know. You don't even She's know. She's still my little baby. Yeah, you still kiss her, right? On the forehead. Yeah. Well, that will go away. Eventually, it will go away. You'll kiss her and you're like, you have, you have acne? 
<laughs> I know. <laughs> I just remember I told Daryl when, when Malia, the baby, when she was a baby, I said, I will never stop kissing her face. Never, ever. I will never. And of course, now I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that. But, you know, it does change. So I'm like, well, you know, I don't think it's fair for a young mother to claim she has a favorite because raising kids is really stressful. Wait till they're all in their 30s and then you decide. <laughs> I don't have a favorite. I really don't. I, mm. I love them all. Plus, I mean, my son had colic and never slept mm. and, oh, you know, God. all of those things. But Olivia, she slept and she was like the perfect nurser and, mm-hmm. you know, all those things. And, yeah. you know, she was just a quiet little fun baby. And yeah, until she wouldn't potty train. God, I, that was a nightmare, an absolute nightmare. But what's cool, the way I look at it is I have a very, very unique relationship with every one of the children. Mm -hmm. And they're all, I wouldn't give up any of them. Like, I I would never say this one's my favorite relationship versus that one. So I wonder if that's how polygamists do it. Is that how they do it? They have unique relationships with everybody and they're not the same? The wives, you mean? Yeah, that's how they were able to. I bet you the husband goes through phases where he has a, a, a favorite. Well, that's probably true. You know, but, mm-hmm. or there's a constant. I like the Cody Brown guy. Oh, I, he likes the one, the one. I think Janelle's always his favorite. That's because they're like BFFs. I agree. I think they're true friends. I think that's why it makes it easier. And mm-hmm. I don't think they really fight that much. And yeah, I she think doesn't thing- expect much of them. Well, because she sees what he is. She knows what he is. There's And it's, there's nothing more than that. So it's probably kind of a relief for him and her, actually. Well, and she's capable. So... Yes, she's a very independent woman. She, I actually really like Janelle. Yeah, I do too. So she's I wouldn't fave. be surprised if they were, like, if she was the favorite. Yeah, I, I would agree with that completely. Okay, so here's number three. <laughs> this is something that I, would happen to one of us. A friend went and placed her order to drive through. She then heard, could you drive up to the speaker? You're talking to the garbage can. <laughs> <laughs> well, who puts a garbage can right there? That's just messed up. Because people have to dump their garbage before they buy more garbage. I oh. have actually done that. I'm like, oh, this isn't the speaker. I've never spoken to it, but I've definitely done something almost as bad. Like, I've almost done that. So I totally related to that. And then finally, and this one, I think this only happens when you're in college, college age, like in your 20s, uh, because I can't fathom a a, a grown ass human doing this. It said, I went to a friend's house not knowing she had moved. I walked right in surprising the new new tenants mid coitus. Oh, my God. That's exactly what I said when I read that. I was like, holy shit. I can't even imagine that. That w- I mean, she's lucky she left with her life. Jeez. I mean, for real. They're like, That's you're not terrible. Janelle. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> it's like, where's Karen? Susan? Yeah. You know? Susan doesn't live here anymore. Oh, my God. That's awful. Yeah. But, you know, adult women do not just barge into someone's house. They knock first. You well, know, they should. Yes. Most people should. Unless it was a dude who did it. I don't know. But anyway, those are the ugly moments this week because I related to literally every single one of them. Yeah. So but we do have ugly moments from our listeners. I've just I have a couple, but I'm kind of waiting to use them for the appropriate times. But they're very good ones. All righty. Well, yes. I think that's a wrap this week. Yes. It's a little shorty. A little short, but that's okay. Mm-hmm. Keep sending in your ugly and awkward moments. Just because we didn't read them this week doesn't mean that we won't read them. Oh, we will. Oh, a couple things about ugly moments. One, do not be afraid to send in more than one. We're all repeat offenders. That's the whole point of being awkward. So I've had a couple of listeners go, oh, I'm so sorry I'm sending another. I'm like, no, are you kidding? We we literally are awkward every week. We actually can build an entire segment around it. And we've been doing this segment for over five years, which means, um, yeah, I would expect you to be a repeat offender. Absolutely. So don't don't be afraid to submit more than one because I would expect that you're awkward. Yeah. So you're like us. Uh, one of us. One of <laughs> us. Also, we will be doing our annual Mother's Day episode soon. And so if you have any specifically Mother's Day awkward moments, like when you were pregnant 
or when you were a mom or your mom, anything re- related to being any kind of mom thing, even if you're a pet mom, I want to know about them. So hopefully you'll hear this before the Mother's Day episode and you will submit some stories for us to read. That would be great. And we'll send out social media reminders about our Mother's Day episode up, com- yeah. up and coming. So that sure. way, hopefully you'll get to see that as well and uh, mm-hmm. send in your moment. Yes. Please be sure to visit our UglyTruth.com website and go to our Ugly Mall where you can click on the Avon website or the Amazon website. Or mm-hmm. even if you don't want to buy anything and you just want to contribute to the show on our main page, there is a PayPal button and just send us, you know, 10 bucks, 20 bucks, whatever it is yeah. that you want to just to support the show. We appreciate that. We appreciate you. So maybe you can appreciate us. Yes. We will see you next Sunday. Have a good rest of your week. We'll see you soon. Bye. Thanks for listening and sharing the show. See you next time on The Ugly Truth.